It is called The Personal Treasures of Bernard and Shirley Kinsey. The collection features rare pieces which until now have been tucked away in a private gallery. Gail Anderson is live in Pacific Palisades for a really special reason. She's taking a look at a renowned African-American art collection. How wonderful, Gail. Good morning. Uh, very special. Yeah. We, good morning. We are at the home of Bernard and Shirley Kinsey to take a look at the Kinsey collection. Of course, we have the Kinseys with us. Good morning, Bernard. How are you? Well, good morning. Good morning. And, How are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm amazed. I, I read and heard about Bernard. Uh, CBS Sunday Morning did a, an amazing piece about the collection and how it all started about. I saw that two or three years ago. So to actually be in here is fabulous. Everybody has a longing to know where they came from and who they are. Documenting the African-American experience from the early 17th century through the tumultuous civil rights era, the Kinseys have had a 30-year love affair with collecting. I think we started looking at our ancestry, our history, and that led to where we are now. Collectors focus on one type of work, one type of artist, one particular period. They're looking at the total picture. The story the feeling, the sensation for African Americans about who we are and where we come from and what we don't know about ourselves comes from being able to look at this collectively. And so this collection, this collection is powerful for that reason. Before slavery really decimated Africa, here's what kind of great people we had. We'll go to the DuSabo Museum to view a special collection of art and artifacts that shine a light on a turbulent era in American history. This allows people to understand what people can collect, what is out there, what's available. Like the Hurston letter, some of the items were passed down through their family. Some were purchased at auctions, and others were acquired during the Kinsey's numerous trips around the world. We've been to 90 countries and six continents, and we basically collected something from all of these 90 countries. But our real focus has always been, how do we speak to the African Americans' experience? For role in our country's politics, but we're making important contributions to our country's art. Bill Whitaker introduces us to a couple who make sure those contributions are not overlooked. All right, we're looking. This is just blows you away. Passion for history. 1632, can you believe this? Get him started. What's, what's about? And I'm gonna wrap it up, I'm gonna wrap it up. And he Let's just continue. can't stop himself. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up. I got more, I got, I got Shirley and Khalil telling me to stop, okay. Not when he's addressing a room full of admirers with his wife Shirley and son Khalil by his side. I know, but I, I gotta get this out. I gotta get this first. I gotta get this out. Not when he's showing. This piece right here is 1888. Uh, the Flag Buffalo here? Soldiers. Now, no, yeah. sharing his extensive collection of historical African-American artifacts. Well, this is the first recruiting post to come and join us, brothers. And documents. Here is the account of the African slave trade. And artwork. Uh, William Tolliver, uh, Charles White, who the first place I come to when I come home, I come in kind of this room speaks to me. Just to surround yourself. Just, that's face. right. I've said all these wonderful black people that have done all these wonderful things and many of these stories have not been told. It's just one part of a Los Angeles home filled with marvelous things. On every wall, in every nook, from the moment you walk in the door. Great. This is um, a portrait of Bernard and I, as you can see. And it's done by artist Lane. Shirley, his wife of 40 years, Bernard found not only someone to share his life, but his passion for collecting. Shirley and I have a thing. I buy the dead artist, she buys the living artist. You know, because I'm looking at the historical part of this thing and she's looking at what, what she likes. Their collection isn't only African American, but mostly. Paintings, sculpture, and documents from the distant past and the not-so-distant. I love this letter. A letter from Malcolm X to Alex Haley, 1963. Over the years, they realized they were collecting a story. When we came to the Americas from Africa, how did we evolve? And, and that evolution is, is, is both painful and wonderful. And, and putting that together is what we tried to do here. That's the story you're telling in this house. Exactly. 
It's been quite a journey for a couple who met as college kids at predominantly black Florida A&M in 1963 when students were fighting for civil rights. I met her after she got out of jail. They've on, grown so on, uh, close. Uh, demonstrating. Demonstrating. So, you know, you know, sit-ins sit and that They kind of finish thing. each other's sentences. So you knew she was something special from the oh, beginning. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Both now are retired from Xerox, where Bernard rose to become vice president. He's now a much in demand business consultant. Get off the streets, drive away. In the wake of the LA riots in 1992, he was tapped along with Peter Uberoff to run Rebuild LA. And over the last uh, 10 years, 11 years, it's been over $2 billion invested in South Los Angeles. The Kinseys have reached a stage in their lives where they can afford to indulge their passions, one even greater than collecting, sharing. Together, they have raised more than $22 million for scholarships at historically black colleges. I'm a grandmother's child. I grew up with my grandmother. I mean, I think about her and I say, you know, mama would not like this if I didn't share this with others. And that's how they view their collection, as something to be shared. We really are more of keepers of this art and historical documents rather than owners. Because frankly, no one can really own this. The collection includes Romare Bearden, Tina Allen. And downstairs in what used to be the wine cellar that we built to be a wine cellar, later turned into a gallery, um, was where we housed all of the documents and artifacts and things about uh, slavery. One of Khalil's friends, our son, this particular young man, as he walked downstairs, said, oh, this must be what our ancestors felt like leaving their homeland. He said when he left upstairs, it was bright and sunny, with all the light coming in, to go downstairs into a darkened room, that he really got this feeling over him. And that's when we said, wow, you know, we didn't plot it this way. It's not all, you know, uh, dark and despair. A lot of it is just wonderful triumph of our people. The art that we have, a lot of the paintings and stuff that we have are all things that kind of remind you of, of, of places, you know, in your past, uh, places you've been, places you maybe you'd like to go. Um, I think that's a big part of, of, of collecting. And what you find is that black people were doing some extraordinary things in astronomy, science, medicine. And a bronze sculpture by Chicago artist Richard Hunt. Shirley Kinsey explains who picks what for their outstanding collection. He likes to collect the dead artists and I like the living artists. <laughs> and that's because for me something has to touch my heart. It means you spend your money on the things that are important and you don't spend your money on frivolous things. You know that black people have been a part of everything that's happened in the Americas almost from the beginning. And having that connection with the past and with history is what really creates this sense of strength inside of us and to know that we have this identity that, and this lineage that is so powerful. We think what we have is the beginning of this story about this wonderful, wonderful race called African Americans that came out of a, a terrible situation. When it became evident that this is the story that we're telling, and I remember walking into the gallery for the first time and seeing everything on the wall, it was like, I can finally see everything. We say to people, collect what you love. We think it's a great manifestation of who you are when you lay it out. <laughs>